Hello, I'm out philosophy walking on the Glastonbury levels and you might be able to make out that little pinprick on the top of a hill in the background, that's Glastonbury Tor. And I thought this would be a, a good time to stop and share some thoughts about the idea it's all perfect. So this has come up on the Tim Freak forum and you can comment about this on there. Uh, I had a lovely email from someone when I was sharing my um, inner development and trials and tribulations a little while back, um, offering me um, assistance, which was beautiful and generous, and it came with the idea that it's all perfect. And I responded saying you know, how grateful I was, um, and I wasn't sure it was all perfect. And that uh, started a conversation which um, I now want to jump into. So, it's all perfect. You hear it a lot in spiritual circles. It's a big idea that a lot of people have. And I get it. I get the feeling. Look, you know, out here on the levels, it's all perfect. It really is. And there's a feeling with that. And there's a, there's a feeling that comes, which is more than just, it's great right now. There's a, a feeling of there's an intelligence behind the universe, what used to be called God. I like the word God still. Which is guiding things which can be trusted. It's okay. There's something very reassuring when you have awful things happen to you or you see awful things in the world and someone says to you, it's okay, it's perfect. It, there's, you know, in the old days it would have been, there's God's plan. It's all God's will. God's plan is working its way out for you and you just need to trust it because it's perfect. And I get the feeling. I don't mean I just get it in some cynical way. I know the feeling and it's a beautiful and reassuring feeling. However, as an idea, it's incoherent. Now, that may not matter to some people, but it matters to me, maybe because I'm a philosopher, but also because I think what happens with incoherent thoughts is they let you down. So I know so many people who've had these great feelings and then have met personal tragedy or have encountered awful things in the world and it's come crumbling down. All that faith has collapsed because it didn't make any sense. And I'm looking for something which I have faith in, which does make sense, which can actually account for the paradox of existence, which is, on the one hand, it, it is, there is something so good happening and trustworthy, and there is a power in the universe that we can trust, I feel. And there's a lot of things which aren't perfect. There's a lot of things which are truly awful. And covering them over with a kind of bland Positivity is not the way to go. So here, here's what's wrong for me with the idea, is why it's incoherent. Uh, like other similar ideas, which on the surface sound really good, but when you look at the small print, as I, as I think of it, suddenly they're not. They're actually quite negative and life-denying. There's a lot of them. I want, I'd like to make a whole series of videos about them, which are very common. This is one of them. Because it's all perfect actually takes away the most precious thing about life, which is our own moral agency. It takes away all agency altogether because if everything that happens is perfect, then there's no real, valid, meaningful choice. It means that what I decide to do is going to be perfect either way. So there's no growth, there's no, there's no um, personal agency, there's no real sense of um, making a choice about what is right or what is wrong. And so there's no moral development of the soul. All of that has now been lost. With this reassuring feeling, you've lost the most precious thing we have. And not just my agency, yours too. Because if the way you treat me is perfect, then it makes no difference what you choose. You have no moral agency. Now, that feels too, you know, that's far too a higher price for me. So I, I would say, along with some other similar ideas I'll talk about another time, I really dislike this idea because it, we lose something so precious to us. However, there is so much, something in there which needs rescuing, which is real and valuable, and I think we can do that. And I think we can do it with this evolutionary philosophy that I now call univigilism. Because what that does is it goes, look, we're on a journey um, towards the more emergent, the greater good, to put it in a rather crude shorthand. And what's emerged from that is actually God. What's emerging from that is this transcendent being of love, and that's a reality which you can experience directly for yourself. But it's not all powerful. It's not the old God who was at the beginning. It's not the intelligence that's making everything happen, who's got a grand plan which is going to happen whatever. 
It's more like um, a much higher version of what we are in that sense. I'm not saying it's anthropomorphic, but it's, it's, it's something which has emerged from the universe. It's the oneness. of It's the universe conscious of itself through us or through the bits that make it up, just as we are the universe conscious of itself on this level made up of all the things that comprise us. Uh, so it's a communion of souls. God is this communion of souls which is a being of love and is guiding everything as best as it is able. What does that mean? It means it's not all powerful because it is part of the emergent universe and just as I have some influence over the emergent universe, I can move my mouth in this way, I can affect things that happen, my choices matter, so that there is, there is a way in which the soul dimension as a whole can affect what happens to us. We become invited to participate in something which is for the greater good. That's what deep intuition is, moral intuition, conscience. And when we follow that, we head towards the greatest good, and that's perfect. And when we don't, then uh, what happens is not for the greatest good, and that's not perfect. Uh, but the overall, that thing is still moving in the emergent direction. So there's a fundamental goodness, not to everything that happens, but to the tendency or the overall direction in which everything is going, which is why I have this huge sense of the essential goodness of existence, because it's heading towards God, it's heading towards the good. But along the way, all sorts of things happen which are um, uh, up and down, in and out, good and bad, perfect and imperfect, if you like. So my suggestion is let go of this idea of it being perfect. That's, that's not helpful. It's not a good way of thinking about it. Instead, embrace the evolutionary journey in which we get to contribute towards that. But there is something we can follow and something we can trust. And also, very importantly, as a paralogical thinker, in every situation there is something good. There is good and bad in everything. So in the worst thing that happens, we can redeem it by choosing to find the goodness in it and growing in love wisdom seeing what, what wisdom we can express, what love we can express, and, and we are forming ourselves. We are made of everything we've ever been. That's what, our, that's what we are. And we form ourselves through our choices. So we get the chance to participate in the movement towards it's all perfect, not be puppets within a universe that's already arrived. It just seems ugly, because <laughs> a lot of it does. But rather, there's an evolutionary process between the less emergent, which is what often seems ugly, not always, or can do, towards the more emergent, which expresses the deeper values like compassion and love and wisdom and redemption. So, in short, look, yeah, we are moving towards it's all perfect. That's a journey that's going to go on forever. Um, but in the process of doing that, we become what we are. We give birth to our own selves, our own souls. And through that, we are creating or unividuating into something greater than ourselves, and that's God. And that is affecting what happens to us. And we listen to that voice, we follow that, we trust in that. It can really offer the same reassurance that we look for in, in more um, uh, less thought through ideas, such as it's all perfect, or it's all the plan, or it's all happening just right. But rather, we get the chance to creatively interact with that process, not be just puppets of it. So it's off the cuff as always, so I hope it was semi-coherent, and um, we'll see what, uh, what everyone thinks. All right, big love. <laughs>